Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. On this channel, you'll find truck and SUV news reviews, interesting stuff I do, interesting stuff I'm up to. And I'm currently up to shopping for a new truck and we're gonna do a lot more camping this year. And we're talking about doing uh, a lot more outdoor stuff and I really want a truck and so there's a lot of questions about half ton, three quarter ton. If you follow my work at all, you know I get a lot of press vehicles throughout the year and these are loaners for a week, but I can never really tow with them very much as far as going for long distance trips and things. And I really just want something around the house at all times. I have a 62 that doesn't like the winter. Plus, it's, you know, that, that's a problem. Anyways, I thought I'd bring in my friend JD from Big Truck and Big RV. He's got a big YouTube channel here. I said big, big, yeah. On the platform, really good channel, full of good information for people who are shopping for RVs. He shows different RVs, shows different uh, accessories for them, talks about towing. And so I thought it'd be good to have a conversation with him and discussing whether we should go half ton or three quarter ton for the truck. I know there's a lot of debate on the comments on this channel and I'm having a lot of debates myself, a lot of debates that the wife and I are having. And so it'll be a good video to kind of go over these and kind of talk about pros and cons. So without further ado, it's a Zoom call and uh, famously JD loves the behind the camera work, which I'm fine with. So you'll see his logo there. That's okay. It's really good information. So let's go ahead and get to all of that right now. All right, I'm joined by my friend JD from Big Truck and Big RV. I've been looking for a half ton or three quarter ton for the channel, as you know, if you've been following the videos out there shopping for one. And some of the suggestions we're wanting to talk to JD. I mean, he's the expert, right? He's got a big channel about trucks and towing and hauling and RVs. And so there's been some ongoing debate from the wife and I, and I brought my friend in. So let, let's hammer out these details. I've seen a few of your videos, JD, and I really appreciate your work. So thank you for joining me. So you're saying you've only seen a few of my videos? Man, that's that's hurtful. I thought you would binge watch my, my channel every day until you made a purchasing decision on the perfect truck for you, man. You know, I actually had the uh, wife was actually watching them with me. So you have two viewers per one video. Boom. Oh, that works. Oh, there we go. Then that's a hundred percent more than I thought. So we're good then, brother. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Good. Um, I've been uh, doing this debate about shopping and I, I have some you know, questions about, you know, there's, there's a lot, of, lot going on between three quarter ton and half ton and looking at like just a travel trailer. And I know you've had some videos where you've talked a lot about should you haul a truck with a travel trailer, which I think is some of your videos are kind of funny because you had like a, a Ram Rebel Eco Diesel, which is just a terrible towing rig. And you had, I think something else just was a terrible rig. But in most half tons, you do get some payload. Those ones you had were really bad. But I think you're coming, when you come down, you have like three main things. And I was curious about these three main things. So you, you're talking a lot about payload. You talk a lot about the length of the trailer. And I think you bring up a really interesting point. You talk about the height of the trailer, all affecting what you can tow. And I think one of the videos you, you said quite clearly that, you know, anything below 28 feet, anything less than 6,000 pounds uh, gross combined weight rating, anything um, fairly short was kind of your target. Do you think that's still kind of the case where you're at with half tons? Well, you know, make a, a few little minor corrections. So gross combined weight rating would be over 6,000 pounds in terms of the trailer itself, having a gross vehicle weight rating or a fully loaded weight rating around 6,000 pounds is generally my suggestion. Now, when it comes to the overall length of a travel trailer, you know, the weight and the length are going to kind of play in together because you're not really going to find many travel trailers that are really over 26 to 27 feet long that are going to be under 6,000 pounds. So typically the length correlates very closely to the gross vehicle weight rating. And the reason why I have those numbers isn't you know, to apply them to every single person or every person who tows. You know, a lot of folks can have a better towing experience just based on how much towing experience they have. And if you are, you know, an over the road guy and you're moving to a pickup truck and you're towing a trailer and you know how to deal with sway when it happens, you know how to manage your trailer brakes, then some of these numbers don't apply as firmly to you as it might to someone else who's just getting into it and just trying to find out what the best, most comfortable and confident towing situation would be for their family. Um, you know this as well as I do, you tow trailers. The last thing you want to do is get behind a trailer, start towing it down the road and white knuckle it the entire time simply because you didn't realize the effect on your vehicle the trailer has, whether or not it's a weight and balance issue, whether or not it's the height issue and how wind impacts a taller profile vehicle and trailer, or whether or not it's simply because your truck doesn't have 
the, the capacities to be able to properly support the amount of tongue weight that's being applied to it or the amount of weight that's being transferred to the back of the vehicle. So when I talk about half ton numbers and I say that 6,000 pound, that's usually what I would consider to be a high average. And that's based mainly on the fact that with a 6,000 pound RV or a travel trailer specifically, you're generally going to see about 1,500 to 1,700 pounds transferred to the truck in total when it comes to cargo. And I'm talking about the hitch weight of the trailer. I'm talking about the people that are inside of the truck, the supplies you generally put in the bed of the pickup truck, and how all that weight adds up. Because if you think about it, a 6,000 pound trailer is going to transfer roughly 600 to 750 pounds worth of tongue weight to the back of your pickup truck when loaded. Depending on how you weight and balance your trailer, if you put more you know, equipment inside of your front storage area, if you load up the back of the trailer, your tongue weight can vary. But most of the time, you're going to see your storage on a travel trailer up front. So you're generally going to be adding pin weight or sorry, adding tongue weight to your truck. So if you average, again, about 600 to 750 pounds, then you have to take about 900 pounds additionally on top of that, considering a typical family of four weighs between 500 and 700 pounds when loaded into a vehicle. And then you generally are going to have stuff in the bed of your truck, which could easily equate to a couple of hundred pounds. And the big one that a lot of people never even factor in is the weight of the weight distribution hitch that you put on the back of the truck, because that's usually going to weigh slightly north of 100 pounds. So when everything is said and done, you're talking about 900 pounds worth of people and supplies, plus the hitch weight of the actual trailer itself. So when you look at cargo capacities of half ton trucks, you're right, some of the, the trucks that I've reviewed in the past or featured have very low uh, payload capacities, but a lot of that is due to the fact that they are luxury trimmed out trucks and that those luxury packages, you know, adding the air leveling suspension on a Ram, you would think gives you this really cool leveling capability, but you're adding about a thousand pounds worth of equipment to that truck, which take away from the payload capacity of that truck. So, you might option that in thinking you're helping yourself from a payload management perspective, when in fact, you might actually be hurting yourself because airbags do nothing to weight distribute your load. Airbags only level your load. So you're still putting just as much weight behind the truck. You're just simply making the truck appear to be level while you're towing with it. I was going to ask you about that. That's a, it seems like a little bit of controversy out there. A lot of guys I'm watching half ton towing videos are like, Oh, I just put airbags on it. Now I'm just fine. And I'm like, wait a minute, airbags don't just magically increase your towing capacity or payload number. They just really just level things out. Yep. And the biggest reason why airbags are ultimately a good option for folks and one they never think about is the fact that they re-aim your headlights at the ground. So typically with most trucks and, you know, auto leveling headlights just haven't made it into the truck market yet, which I don't understand. They're making them so they turn and go around corners and things like that, which I could care less about. What I would like to see is what Nissan has been doing for a long time, what Toyota has been doing, where they give you a switch that allows you to position your headlights up or down. So whenever you have a heavy load in the back, your headlights aren't aiming up, blinding everyone coming at you. And airbags can help you accomplish that as well, simply because it levels your truck back out. But you're absolutely right. Airbags on a truck are designed to level the load. Airbags on a truck are designed to help prevent sway or at least control body roll as well and essentially act as a, you know, a, um, a firmer suspension to prevent the truck from wandering as much whenever you have a load, especially when being impacted by wind. So it, they can help in terms of sway control. But the only thing that's really going to help you in terms of Weight control is going to be either properly managing the weight and balance of your trailer where the load is and using a weight distribution hitch, which transfers weight around your rig as opposed to just right there on the hitch itself. But then again, just because you have a weight distribution hitch doesn't mean the weight magically disappears. It means you're transferring it to a different part of your truck and you're transferring it to a different part of your trailer. So those are also really important factors that a lot of people don't generally think about. 
Yeah, and you're right, weight distribution hitch is really important. I've done some stories on that and actually own one. And you're not wrong. That son of a bitch weighs about 100 pounds. <laughs> and I, I got it placed in the yard and I hate moving it because it is heavy with all the pieces put together. So let, let's let's expand beyond this. So so let's say, you know, you're in that range, 6,000, maybe we're looking at 8,000. I, I don't think my wife, my wife and I are discussing, you know, where we're at with that. And we're looking at trailers because I, I tell people when they're buying trucks and they want to camp, start with the trailer first and then work your way into the truck. That way you have an idea of what you're really towing, kind of split some classes there of trucks. When we look at like a three quarter ton, you know, I, I sent you this quick image if you had a chance to look at it, but the, the weight payload difference between a half ton and three quarter ton on just some basic trucks I, I spec'd out on Ford.com, I mean, it's considerable. It's like 1,600 pounds of difference between payload and two trucks. The towing's about the same, but the payload is dramatically different. And, you know, as you know, a three quarter ton truck, it's just the frame is different, the brakes are different, everything about that truck is just different. And so when you, when you start talking about moving a three quarter ton class, I feel like you have one part of you just saying, if you're a newbie towing, you know, maybe do over capacity just so you have some peace of mind. But also when you start going three quarter ton, you really are expanding the length of the trailer and the gross vehicle, vehicle rate rating. Yeah, you're doing a lot. So three quarter ton truck is basically a step up into a truck designed to tow. A half ton truck is essentially a truck that gives you a tremendous amount of capability beyond any lighter vehicle like an SUV or a car, but it also gives you some ability to tow. That's probably the best way of, of, of d- describing this, simply because a half-ton truck, and you know this as well as I do from all the media events we've been on, they're designed for comfort. They're designed to give you a luxury SUV type feel now. You hop into a pickup truck today, a half ton, it feels nothing like they did 20 years ago. They are smooth. They handle well. They feel great. You can be on long drives and not feel fatigued. You don't get bounced around with these trucks. When you move to a three-quarter ton truck, it's an entirely different experience, even though they're trying to make them smoother. They're moving to fewer leaf springs. They're trying to soften them up a little bit but they're never going to be a half ton truck for a couple of reasons. First of all, a three quarter ton truck empty curb weight is about 2000 pounds more than it would be for a, for a, um, your typical half ton. So when you look at it from that perspective, you are dealing with something that's far heavier, something that's far more designed to carry and manage heavier weights And ultimately, you're dealing with something that is a better overall package for managing something behind it. Basically, you're not dealing with the risk of the dog wagging or the tail wagging the dog as much. Um, The way I like to describe this, and this is a great way for people who like to visualize things. If you are walking a dog and let's say you're walking a small Pomeranian or a small Chihuahua or something going down the street with it, that dog can do anything it wants to do. And you're probably not going to struggle much trying to pull that dog along. But now put a, you know, 80 pound, 100 pound German Shepherd or, you know, pit bull or something behind you and try to carry that and pull that dog along. And that dog wants to run around and and move. It's going to control your body motion. It's going to control how you can move around. And that's very similar to these trailers. If wind is impacting a trailer that you're towing that's going to be felt in the truck. The heavier the truck, the more planted the truck is, the longer the wheelbase the truck has, and the less ability for the springs to compress as easily, the more control it's going to have over the trailer versus the trailer dynamics controlling the truck. Yeah, and that, that's completely the, the case. I mean, that's why you see a lot of crew cabs, eight-foot beds and three-quarter ton, and even in the one tons. That's why I see dualies too. I mean, dualies are perfect for wind. I mean, they really have a stable plant there on the ground. Um, and that's why, you know, when, I was, when I'm specking out crew cab half tons, I'm always going longer bed, just for the longer wheelbase to allow myself to have a long, bigger footprint on the ground. It just, it just makes more sense. So I, you know, I know you got, uh, we have some stuff going on today and you're a busy guy like I am, but let's, uh, let's wrap this up pretty, pretty succinctly for people is that, you know, really in my view, you start shopping trailer first, then choose your truck. You kind of don't fall in love with the truck, but also realize that, you know, you're going to have some pros and cons that like we're talking about half tons can have a softer ride, more luxurious kind of feel to it. It's to me a better all around in town family kind of riding truck, which is where that market's taken off. Versus three-quarter ton, which is going to feel heavier, it's going to feel um, more stiff on the road, and it's going to have more uh, a stronger truck. And so you have that pro and con. Is that kind of how you wrap things up? 
Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. And to, to kind of touch base on a point you made a second ago, you know, a lot of folks ask me what they should look at first. Should they buy the truck and then get the trailer or should they get the trailer and get the truck? But the reality behind this is, you know, it, it, you know, that old adage, buy once, cry once. And that applies to trucks and it applies to RVs. You find a lot of folks that say, okay, I'm going to find the RV first. That way, when I buy my truck, I have the perfect truck for this RV. But then you have a lot of folks that say, you know what, RVs are one of those very subjective things that you might like the RV you get today. But after you use it the first time or the second time or third time, you realize, man, I hate this floor plan. I'm moving up. I have a friend of mine who I featured on my channel several times. He bought an R-Pod, small unit, thought that that was going to be the end all be all. They are tent campers. They wanted the next best thing from tent capping, get off the ground, have some luxuries. They went out in it three times before the wife, who was actually the one who wanted the smaller unit, said, I can't handle this anymore. When it's raining outside, when we're inside the RV at night, it feels so claustrophobic. It doesn't feel anything as natural like a tent. They actually preferred a tent over the R-Pod. So within six months of getting that first R-Pod, they upgraded to a second trailer. And it's the trailer they have today, which is a 24-foot trailer and it has bunks in it, it's larger, it's got a slide out. But then he realized really quickly the Durango that he was using to tow the R-Pod wasn't really up to towing this trailer, so he upgraded to a Ram 1500, which had the tow capacity, but then when it got windy, he still felt like the trailer was causing the truck to move more than he liked, so then he upgraded to a Ram 2500 truck, but now he wants a small fifth wheel. They've camped just maybe five times in this trailer. They've been all over the country in it so far, but they're like, you know what? We just don't have the room we want. We went in our neighbor's fifth wheel and man, it was amazing. So now what's the smallest or largest fifth wheel that we can put behind this Ram 2500 and safely tow it? So the argument can be made that, yeah, you pick one and then you base the other one off of that choice. But the reality is most people that are shopping for a specific type of RV could very well change the type of RV they want after spending a little bit of time in it. And if you base the truck specifically on that RV that you bought, you might find that when you upgrade to your next RV, that truck might have to change again. So my best suggestion would be shop for a truck that's going to have enough overkill that it can help you stay in the same vehicle, at least if you plan on upgrading your RV. That could still be a half ton truck. You know, if you are shopping for an R-Pod and you're looking at an F-150, then that F-150 could easily handle a trailer significantly heavier than an R-Pod. So you might just want to get an F-150 with the max tow package, maybe a heavy duty payload package, if you can even find one of those. But if you think, wow, you know what, we love this, we want to travel more, we want to go further out, we know we need bigger holding tanks, we know we want an additional slide, we have kiddos that want a bigger bunk area, we want privacy from them, we could go to something bigger. And I would highly recommend just to avoid that, you know, buy once, cry once mentality that you go to something big enough to account for the fact that you may move up to a larger trailer and you're not killing your budget and finding out, man, are we just going to have to bite the bullet and either buy a new truck again? Or are we going to have to tow this potentially larger RV with a truck that we don't feel comfortable with? And that's a decision RV owners and future RV owners make every single day and have to think about. Well, thank you for the uh, going down the rabbit hole. I hope I can avoid that a little bit, um, but I doubt I will. I think I'll go down the rabbit hole as well. But hey, I, I just want to thank you for your time, and I'll put a link down below to your channel. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for being on. I appreciate it, Tim. It's going to be good to see you again once they lift all these travel restrictions. Yeah, you know, I'm actually going to go to Texas here in a couple of weeks. We'll talk about that. Yeah, sounds good, my friend. Good talking to you. And there you go. There's my interview with J.D. And again, thank you for being on the channel. Thank you for lending me your expertise and uh, your time because it's really valuable to me as I'm out there shopping for trucks. I hope you found this information as formative as well as I did and gave you some food for thought. Really good uh, thoughts there as far as pros and half ton, three quarter ton. So put your comments below. What do you guys think? What did you guys get out of the video? Also check this video out over here. It's a good time. Website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.